Okay, we're sitting on the porch and we're talking about the Pu'er and the Senex archetypes and um, the male hero's journey, the masculine healing journey. And Noah had a revelation today about um, one of the transition points in that journey. Yeah, so this, this came about um, because I've had a couple of clients in, in just the last, actually two clients in two days, who um, both of whom have uh, had issues coming up, one whose father passed suddenly, mm. and um, another whose father passed, uh, you know, probably in the last year or two, but who's, in the course of our conversation, the particular sort of issues that he was dealing with, it turned out, were unbeknownst to him, really kind of connected to the themes of losing his father. So twice in two days, this theme of the loss of the father has come up, the death of one's human father. Mm. And um, a number of things kind of occurred, all sort of mishmashed together. Um, one is that, you know, you and I talk about the poor Senex archetypes all the time. We've got other videos about it. It's a really powerful way of communicating with people and helping them understand what's going on in their psyches. And it occurred to me that if there's a single sort of uh, most potent kind of initiatory experience that represents the transition from Pu'er into Senex, um, it would be the death of one's father. And the phrase that immediately came to mind is, the king is dead, long live the king, right? Mm. It's, it's, it's that immediate movement that, that as soon as the king dies, whoever is next in line, who was not the king, <laughs> as soon as the king dies in that moment becomes king, right? Mm. And so for, for the human uh, experience, um, well, the human slash archetypal experience, right? That when one's father, the old man, the Senex, dies, then one becomes the Senex in the same way, right? Mm, yeah, um, inherits that role. It, it, right, um, sort of whether you like it or not, Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, if you're the next in line in the world, it doesn't matter if you don't want to be king, <laughs> right? <laughs> the king is dead, and you're yeah. up, right? And same way when the, when, when the father dies, and it, it, it almost, to me, doesn't matter what age, right? Mm. Um, you you certainly uh, and this is actually all secondary to where I'm going but here we are um, that, that there are young men whose fathers die young and they feel sort of prematurely thrust into responsibility um, and it can even be a more sort of let's say natural timeline where you know let's say it's a grown man in his 50s whose father's in his 80s mm that it's really still fundamentally the same experience that it, no matter how sort of mature and evolved and um, willing to be a grown man, so to speak, one is, there's, there's something about when, they're, when you don't have that elder father, son, ex figure to look up to, mm. uh, wow. to sort of turn to anymore, right? That, that as men, we are just sort of conditioned is the right word um, it's just sort of built into the experience that that we have whether it's our literal father or older men some that that older generation of of men that that symbolize uh, experience and wisdom and know-how that growing up we've always turned to or looked to in some way right? mm -hmm. and that when the literal father dies um, we don't have that anymore and how does that impact men? Well, psychologically. In the case of, you know, both of these men that I was working with, uh, which I won't go into specifics, but but their issues of 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 that sort of recognition of, I, wait, it's on me now. <laughs> yeah. Right. That. Yeah. It, you know, my whole life I'm used to sort of having a resource to turn to. For, comfort, wisdom, instruction a safety net of some sort and not only does that go away so to speak but really one is immediately thrust into the role of then sort of being the provider of that mm. right 
um, or being wow. the sort of backstop of that. Again, even if even if a even if a adult man has kids of his own, he's playing that father role to them, of course. But he still has his father. He still has that older generation. He's still plugged into a higher, higher quote, the, the, higher There's resource. something. There's some higher. This is exactly where I'm going with it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This was actually the the whole point of the revelation. <laughs> there's this higher resource. Mm. Um, and then my real revelation was around how this inflection point relates to the awakening expansion process of consciousness and why this loss of the father is so difficult for people I mean and listen to the words loss of the father that in the sort of self-revelation um, awakening enlightenment experience or, or process um, we'll use experience for lack of a better word um, that it actually mirrors that that to recognize one's self as the divine <laughs> as God effectively is to lose God mm. that they go hand in hand right mm. that um, there's the death of the father God mm -hmm. that that is the natural consequence of recognizing the nature of oneself mm -hmm. as that thing that we've been looking up to and searching for right and so what do you see men going through besides the it's all on me is there is there like a sense of devastation well i no not necessarily uh, feeling like orphans well there yeah there's there's that um I think different men, in fact, even both of these men I've worked with have, were having very sort of uh, disparate uh, experiences and responses to it, but I think um, fundamentally it just, it sort of forces some shift. Mm -hmm. That was sort of the recognition, and whether you think about that as a forced shift, it, it's much harder to stay uh, locked into the any kind of Puer shadow, I think, or residual Puer complex, or um, or any sort of unconscious identification with with boyhood in a shadowy sort of way. I think when one goes through that initiation experience of of losing the father, yeah. right, um, and it's neither it's neither good nor bad, um, but again, to me, it, it mirrors. I guess I guess my revelation was. Um, that it's sort of a preparatory, it's the human preparatory experience, potentially, for that expansion of consciousness that mirrors it. Mm. That expansion of consciousness, again, being, being the one where there's the, the inner self-revelation of the nature of, of consciousness and reality and what God is and isn't, mm. right? Um, after which there's, again, people experience it differently, but most people have the experience of like, Oh, <laughs> there's there's no one to turn to outside me. Yeah. Right. When you recognize God within you, then by definition, it's like suddenly prayer doesn't make any sense anymore. Like, am I praying to me? Like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. We're running so, out of time. That was else. it. Okay. Thoughts. <laughs>